You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello, long time no see. I know that may not be the case for many of you, but we are here to talk about drones and giving you value. But before we talk about that, if you've come here and you've already had a mistake, you've already gotten way too excited about flying, and you maybe didn't read everything in your user manual, that's okay. That's pretty normal. But if you're here listening to this show because you broke your drone and you're trying to get some training and insight on new things, I would highly recommend you send your drone into unmannedsas.com forward slash drone you. Um, if you didn't sign up for that CareFresh program, don't worry. These guys can take care of your drone. Oh, for only $29.95, they'll send you a sticker so that you can actually mail your drone to them. They're going to diagnose the problem. So yes, they're going to take it apart. They're going to see what's wrong. And if you elect to get your drone fixed with them, once you get your quote back, well, guess what? They're going to take 20 bucks or excuse me, 1995 of the 2995 back and apply it towards fixing your drone. Isn't that pretty cool? If you want to get your drone fixed before you hear any more information and education, just check out unmannedsas.com forward slash drone you. All right, guys, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode 535. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us today. Hope your week is off to a great start. Yeah, I'm sure it is. The weather is getting nicer. I know oh, I know. if so you excited. are in the Midwest, the weather is not that nice for you right now with all the tornadoes and wind going on. Mm. But guess what? It's getting warmer. It's getting closer to the time of lots of flying. So if you are watching this podcast and you need succinct information to become the best pilot you can so you can take advantage of this summer so that you can make money, so you can be outside, so you don't have to live in mediocrity, guess what? Check out the book live in the drone life, or just become a drone you member and go through those classes as fast as you can. Come inside the community because really the main difference between drone you and everyone else, it's the community. It's not only just a community, but a community of people who are passionate and wanting to better themselves and the people around them. So guys, if you're ready to join that community and become a better pilot and elevate your experience, check out the droneu.com. But yes. Rob, we've got some really awesome news. You know, we said March 2nd, the FAA was going to release those airspace maps and they didn't do that. Which, um, which isn't a big surprise. And I will tell you, Paul, that this subject is, is so timely. I know that um, it's something that's important to you to talk about for good reason, because literally, I don't think there's another question or another aspect of the drone life that we get more correspondence about and that, that is airspace airspace and how do i fly i don't understand wait a minute you want they want me to wait 90 days i have to go through this process but my client's not going to wait 90 days i mean that's that just is constantly well, coming through our feeds and yeah and what else is constantly coming through our feeds are other drone you pilots who are saying like these guys are operating illegally like this yeah, guy even exactly. wrote on facebook how he failed the test the 107 test, but still went out and was servicing clients with pictures and video. And I mean, the issue is rampant. I mean, right. and you know, for you drone, you guys out there, you know, just remember it's, it's difficult and you have to remember this focus on your quality, focus on your quality. And if you're so upset, if you're so mad that they're operating illegally, don't call the FAA. And what are they going to do? Yeah, and they're going to give them the phone call. Hey, you're supposed to operate under the law. Blah blah blah. If that, have a nice day and move on. And they still operate illegally. There are at least ten of those here in Albuquerque. Yeah, ten. Um, yeah, that we know of. That we uh, yes, that we know of. Um, why don't you call their client and show them why you're so much better, and then men drop the bomb that they're doing this illegally and that they are subject to a federal subpoena and shutting down their business and see what they say. I don't know. You want to combat the problem, combat the problem like that. Otherwise, do yourself a favor, be happier, and don't worry about it. And focus on your quality. If they piss you off, the fact that they're getting business and you're not, guess what? They had more balls than you. That's right. Because they went out and they called people. They created relationships with people. They went to association meetings. Are you getting mad yet? They went out and did the thing that you aren't doing. So why aren't you doing it? That's my question. 
So anyway, let's talk. Let's get back to the nice, happy talking about airspace. <laughs> let's get back to. I come back here. Yeah, come back here. Uh, <laughs> let, let's get back to uh, to the good news. So this weekend there was a symposium in a state far, far away with a land that is greener than our desert and beach that's right outside these doors and walls. <laughs> it's a beautiful beach. There's no water, but it's a beautiful beach. <laughs> and we heard something, and you're going to hear it here first on Ask a Drone You. Recently at the FAA, you all know from our podcast that four or five different people were tasked to come up with some sort of immediate authorization app to give people airspace authorizations, right? To make this process easier, to streamline it, to create mm -hmm. it more efficient, to create a more efficient process. And everyone's like, well, where are the maps? Where's the app? Earlier this week, actually it was last week, earlier last week, AirMap. You know the guys at AirMap. Mm -hmm. They have the easiest integrated airspace maps on a device that can rip your location and overlay those two things together. They're the best because they can provide you with a phone number to the tower, whether you're flying for hobby or commercial purposes. They're the best because they've always stayed updated and they've never had bad information on the app. Unlike some others. Unlike before you fly, the yes. FAA one. Right. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. You know what? Yeah. Go ahead. But here's why I like the FAA. Because they're smart enough to realize we can't create an app. Yeah. Or, or why recreate the wheel when there's a pretty darn good wheel sitting there ready for us to yeah, partner that, with. Yeah. That, that's, a great, that's a great point, you know. And uh, they realize that they can do it better. So AirMap was displaying a three-dimensional, yes, 3D models of these grid maps that we have seen. So they've taken these grid maps, they have created 3D models of these maps. We've not seen these. They have overlaid them onto sectionals in AirMap, and supposedly this is the new airspace authorization app. There are new layers in the map. You're going to be able to click your position, supposedly. We will see. But but yeah, but please don't ask us, don't don't write in and say we we heard you talking about that when's it coming out? And we don't I know. haven't I haven't seen it yet. We don't know. <laughs> we're just kind of letting you know this is in the works so that we've heard, right? Yes. In fact, um So we're going out on a limb here a little bit. Yeah, General Counsel of AirMap actually kind of gave it up. <clears throat> he didn't really give it up. He didn't he, he hinted. Didn't, he hinted without confirming or denying, but anyone who has a background in psychology or behavioral economics could tell you that he really slipped the beans. He didn't. Don't fire him. He's a good guy. Anyway, but um, if AirMap does end up becoming the airspace authorization app, which we believe it could happen, I would love this. Mm -hmm. AirMap is who I use every single day of the week. It's the best. So the fact that the FAA is like, look, we can't reinvent the wheel, which by the way, someone has reinvented the wheel officially. So don't use that term anymore because you may not sound very intelligent. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's called the shark wheel. And yes, it's better than the regular wheel. Anyway, <laughs> we're not going to talk about that anymore. Okay. Squirrel. <laughs> so, <laughs> I shot a video for them and I was like, wow, they really reinvented the wheel. <laughs> like, and went skateboarding on them. They're incredible. And I've been told all this time that couldn't happen. <laughs> I would have done it. Uh, anyway. So, okay. I guess that's ahead. a whole new definition for thinking outside of the box. Yeah. <laughs> dang it. Anyways. So here's, here's my question. What does this really do for the pilot who still has the issue of needing to go get authorization, file it through the website, deal with a whole 90 day waiting period, supposedly? How does this help that situation? As these, of right now, or, or how, it, it does not help anything because it doesn't exist yet. No, 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 no. Meaning uh, it's course. not available to you guys yet. Right. It's not available. Well, my question is when and if, we should probably throw the if out there, it does become available in the form that we think it might, what does it do for us then? It is going to limit the time frame it takes to get airspace authorizations they're supposed to be instantaneous so if you have a client that says hey i need you to fly here 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 and here if as long as you get the airspace authorization you're good to go okay um it's going to create a permanent record of the fact that you were there but really it's going to create a more efficient process because 
There's even a federal lawsuit out there now where they're saying that the FAA is actually inhibiting economic development because of this whole 90-day rule, because no one ever gets 90 days prior notice to fly anything ever, ever. Right, so, yeah, that's just, I mean, it's ludicrous. That, so <laughs> That just doesn't work. Yes. That's even, like an airplane coming in for landing and saying, we'll, we're, get, we'll get to you in a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Get to you in a couple 90 weeks. Days, come back. We we'll know, let you know you may run out of gas. We understand. <laughs> Just deal with it. Park somewhere for a little while. Yes. You know, your passengers may be mad. We may fine you because you kept the passengers in the plane for that long. But, <laughs> you know. Anyways. That's uh, the kind of sense it makes. But what it does is I hope it is also going to curtail a lot of illegal operations because there won't be any more excuses to, to not operate legally. But hmm. the fact is I see on average a dozen videos with illegal drone operators daily. At yeah, least a dozen. That, if I'm seeing a dozen a day, let's how put many it are really way. out there? There are more people flying illegally than there are flying legally. Yes. I think that, I mean, I would feel, I don't have those numbers, but just based on what well, we, we see, we, I would say that's, we can be pretty confident in saying that. I would say that we don't have the numbers on paper, but from people who have come on the show, we know that 5 million drones were sold just by one company in the last two, three years. Only 600,000 of them are registered. So now we have 4.5 million drones not registered. There are more registered drone pilots than there are aircraft pilots, okay? And then you're telling me that of... All of the f 5 million drones that are out there, only 15,000 are being used for commercial purposes. Is that how many 107s there are uh, so yeah, far? Yeah, it's like almost 16,000 now. Yeah. You're telling me that 16,000 of 5 million, so less than 1% of 1%, is using drones commercially? I don't believe that. Yeah, I don't believe it either. So, again, back to the app. If it comes out the way that we think it might, so it would be something where somebody would pull it up. They'd say, I would like to fly here for this purpose, and then within that app, authorization would transpire. Supposedly. Supposedly. But Which, that's, if that's it the does, hope. awesome! I mean, that would be amazing. Yes. I, I gotta be honest. It's hard to believe. Why? Because th the government does something that makes sense? It's a big undertaking. <laughs> it's a big... <laughs> I just say the things Rob is thinking. <laughs> well... Uh, whether it's the government or the or, things or, that you're thinking. Or uh, even if we put it on air map, that's a big undertaking to be able to ha have that happen um, it's pretty seamlessly for that many people that are trying to do it. It's it's a big undertaking. Yeah. No, I uh, I agree wholeheartedly. So I, I hope. We can all hope. Well, you got to give them, uh, you, and we're going to talk about this in the next podcast about flying over people and what we've heard from the FAA, but... What the the main theme I'm hearing in the differentiation between local FISDO and the national group is that the national group is more kind of lackluster. We got to get this thing out or else we're going to get in trouble. While the FISDO, the flight standards guys, are more traditional. They're more manned aircraft. They're more mm -hmm. by, sure. by the book. And then they've got their hands tied by national. Yeah. And, and that's just a transition that takes time going from the, just the whole manned environment they've been a part of for so many years and even resisting a little bit. This is a really bad analogy, but just think about all the ski resorts that were ski only, no snowboarders. And it took them a while mm -hmm. to come over to the snowboard side, but then they saw, you know, they're not bad guys. I mean, they're not all just kind of ski bum, so causing like, trouble it's people. It's like the natural human resistance to change. I think so. Yeah, and, and so, but ultimately, I think there's maybe a couple of ski areas in the entire United States now that still only allow skiing. I no, so happy when Taos of them, opened up to Which surprised me, actually, that Taos did come over to whatever, whether the you dark think side. it's the good side, the bad side, whatever, but they did make the transition. Anyways, the point is, it just takes people time to make major transitions like that, particularly, and you talk about psychology, when they have been so trained in one way, in one paradigm. You know paradigm. what, that's so important, that's so, that, oh, that's such a good point. And to reiterate your point, I was recently having a meeting with FISDO here in Albuquerque, and uh, the guy said to me, he's, uh, we were talking about airspace rights, and he was like, I said, you know, because the homeowner has rights to their airspace, and he said, no, they don't. No homeowner ever has rights to their airspace. Hmm. And I said, well, what makes you think that? He's like, the FAA controls from the ground to the upper reaches of the sky. That's what they control. And I said, well, well, how, 
How then is it possible if the FAA controls the air from the ground up that you're able to build a house, grow trees, build bushes, build your kid a fort, maybe put a pool in, a slide? How is anyone able to do any of that without FAA permission? Because they're using <laughs> the air. Mm. How is that? Can you answer my question, sir? Silence. Well, sir, what about Cosby versus the United States, which says that uh, you do have a constitutional right to the airspace you use? Are you telling me the Constitution is wrong? Huh. <laughs> it has been times like these mm. that I have had to educate my local FISDO, and it just blows my mind. Yeah. So again, and that's part of the process, is sort of graciously, calmly educating um, folks that aren't necessarily that interested in learning, although I think that interest is building and, and they are understanding that, look, we need to, 5 million drones, right? You just said that one company, mm -hmm. they're out there. We better get on board with figuring out how to integrate them into the airspace as seamlessly and safely as possible. And people are saying, well, you know, bad things haven't happened yet. Bad things haven't happened yet. I have heard that during two recent sporting events, 10 drones were taken out on one day by security officials. Hmm. So the problem is arising. More and more. Oh, yeah. I, and I feel like we talking we're about losing, Hawaii and yes. what a big issue drones are over there. There's yes. Everybody in their cat has one, yep. goes out, flies it over people wherever they feel like it. They're the not really iPhone, iPhone Go or iPhone Do or whatever guy on YouTube, he does that. I mean, he's like one of the worst examples of things not to do with the drone. They're everywhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why I'm coming out with a vlog because I'm sick of it and I'm going to show you through the vlog how you can do this properly and have way more fun than these guys, Have get way better pictures, way better video, and truly just rise above because a lot of these guys just have no conceptual or technical background and knowledge to why these things do, do what they do. And once you know that, you're able to do so much more with the vehicle. Yeah. It's like this. If you know how a circular saw is built, chances are you're going to learn how to curve a circular saw when you're, when you're sawing. You have to know what settings to use, how deep the blade goes, but you can still cut a perfect circle with a circular saw. Most people don't know how. It's the same thing with the drone. If you don't know how to operate a drone, how are you ever going to get the most cinematic orbit? How are you ever going to get the most cinematic shots flying through trees and never hitting anything? That is, a, that is a great comparison. Just saying. Drone and circular saw. I would have not thought of that. Um, we used the DeWalt analogy, I feel like, on episode 50 or something a long time ago. That's pretty good. So, in fact, even <laughs> uh, deep. even the HBO guy who was like, I listen to your show, he, he mentioned the DeWalt analogy <laughs> to him. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Anyway, guys, I hope this airspace and air map integration really happens. If it does happen, I think it's going to make life so much easier for all of us. And it's just going to get better and better and better. So while we still have these kind of systemic issues, let me ask you the question. Are you working on your skill? Are you flying every day? Are you watching that footage, figuring out how to get that buttery smooth footage? Are you watching the classes at the Drone U, the Advanced Aerial Cinematography? Which, by the way, I have an even more difficult one coming out. I don't, I've just started writing down these new cinematic moves, like just trying to get them on paper so I don't forget them. But uh, these are going to be the most complex of the most complex, and they're definitely going to take your competitive advantage to a new level. So, As in you master these, there will be nobody that competes with you. Yeah, there's no one right now, anyone, anybody who can do these right now. I know mm. for a fact I've been watching the top, top, top guys, been watching even the up-and-comers, and no one is even touching this. Martin Scorsese will be knocking on your door. I hope that uh, Tom Marty. Hanks knocks on my door and says, I want you to do some epic aerials for one of my movies because Tom Hanks makes my favorite movies because they're always intellectually stimulating. Yeah, he's good. He's definitely so, good. Anyway. Cool. Cool. So that is going to do it for us today, guys. Stay tuned on the AirMap stuff. But guess what? If AirMap does end up becoming the immediate authorization app, you heard it here first. All right, guys? So make sure... You continue to tune in, subscribe. Please leave us a review because of you and your reviews and your shares because not only do you find this information useful, but so do others. And by spreading this information, guess what? We're helping out the industry. We're helping maintain the freedom to fly and it's working. So thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And this is Ask Drone You.